Hi, I'm Davin from Brewbits.com. Behind the camera we got James. Say hello James. Today we thought we'd show you how easy it is to make a Woodford's Wherry beer kit. To the quality that you'd be able to go into a pub on the Norfolk Broads and ask for a pint of Woodford's Wherry and it tastes pretty much the same. What are we going to need? Well, we are going to need a bucket to brew it in. We're going to need a pressure barrel or bottles or both, um, depending on how you want to store it. We need a trial jar with a hydrometer so we can check the specific gravity and we'll get into that a bit later. We're going to need a simple siphon, a big spoon, a thermometer, we're going to need some priming sugar and then we're going to need something to sterilise it all and in this case I'm using sodium metabisulfate. Right, let's get on and show you what we need to do to get this brewing. So what's in your box of Woodford's Wary? Well, in here we have two cans of malt extract and also a sachet of yeast. Now our malt extract in here is very thick, very gloopy and is very very difficult to pour. So what we do is we just pop those into a bowl of hot water that I've already pulled off and what we're also going to need to do is we're going to pull off a kettle full of water pop that on because we're going to need six pints of boiling water. So, whilst that's boiling, I'm going to have a quick sip. <clears throat> right, that's a kettle boiled. So, whilst that's been boiling, the cans have been sat there in my hot water. And so what we're going to do now is pop the top off. Come on in James. I want you to, to get a look of how thick and how gloopy this is. Right. Oh, I've come off the top. And then here, I'm going to have a look as this pours in. Oh. It's thick like treacle. It smells a bit like treacle, but with a beery smell as well. You can see it takes a long time to pour out, even though we've warmed it up. Whoop, there goes the top off. Right, so, we've still got quite a lot. Come on in and have a look, James. We've still got quite a lot in our cans, and so we're going to be showing you how to get that out in a moment. I'm going to do the other can first of all, though. Oops. Bad. My can opener is a few years old, unfortunately, and uh, not really wanting to get through this can. <laughs> can opener's gone funny, James. <laughs> Just use your teeth. Unfortunately, I can't get into my can. Very good. Yay. And we're in. Right, and in it, the second one goes. <laughs> okay, again, we've still got quite a lot of gloop inside our can. So the next step is we need to add six pints of boiling water to this. So, what I'm going to do... Pint number one, I'm actually going to pour it straight into one of my cans. Pint number two. Pour it straight into my can. Pint number three. Goes in the bucket. Right, now I need to get another three pints, so I need to put my kettle back on. But I'm going to leave the boiling water to and get to work on the uh, malt extract in the tins and then we'll come back and show you what we need to do next. So that's four pints in a bucket and of course I've still got my other two pints in my can so what I'm going to do is give them a good stirring to get rid of all that malt extract. And of course it's 
very hot, so I'm going to get a tea towel and use that to pour that in. That's in there like that. And in goes number two. So that's our malt extract in the bucket. And in there is six pints of boiling water. And we give it a good stir. Come on in, James, come and have another look. Because this is actually still really thick. So you need to stir it to get all the malt extract and the boiling water. Don't get the camera steamed up. You need to mix it all thoroughly together so you can find no more of this gloopiness in the bottom of your bucket. Right, that looks like, feels like we're pretty much done there. So now what we do is we're going to top this up to 40 pints, uh, which is your 23 litre mark or your, your five gallon mark basically. I'm quite lucky, I've got a tap that's uh, quite reach until I do that. So cold tap water and up to your 40 pint mark. Okay, so we're up to our five gallons. We need to give it a good stir now. It's got a nice throffy head on it. Come on, have a look, quick look at this, James. And I'll try and show you what it looks like now without taking some of the head off of it. Right, we need to give this a good stir to get all of the malt extract with the boiling water mixed into our cold water. Now we've stirred it all in, we need to check the specific gravity. And this tells us how much sugar per gallon or per litre uh, is actually in the brew. And that's going to tell us how much alcohol could potentially be in it once it's finished fermenting. So my specific gravity is coming out here at 1.042. So keep a note of that for now. And then before we barrel and bottle it, we'll take the specific gravity again. We can do a quick calculation to work out how much alcohol is in it. And so what we need to do now is take the temperature with our thermometer because we want to check to make sure it's about 20 degrees. Um, and then we'll know that it's ready to add our yeast. Excellent, okay, it's looking like it's smack on, so that's perfect. So what we do now, come on out James, come and have a look at this. We've got a sachet of yeast, what we're going to do is take the top off, and all we're going to do is sprinkle our yeast on top, like that, easy as that. And what we're going to do now, is we're going to take the lid, Pop it on top. And now this goes in a warm place, about 20 degrees. And uh, keep an eye on it, have a look every day. You'll be quite interested to see what happens. You'll get big throffy heads come up and then it will go back down and it might come back up again. So have a quick look at it each day so you can see what's going on, but don't stir it. Um, so it needs to go somewhere warm, about 20 degrees for about the next five days until you start noticing all of the um, bubbles and all the fermentation really start to slow down and then we'll know that it's ready to barrel and bottle and we'll show you how to do that soon. Our Woodford's Wary has been in my warm cupboard for the last six days and it's had a really vigorous fermentation and over the last couple of days I've noticed the bubbles have pretty much stopped. So I've taken a couple of readings with my hydrometer and my trial jar and they've both been coming out at 1.012. So it's telling me we're ready to move on to the next stages. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna siphon out the beer from the first bucket into a second bucket I have down here, which I've sterilized with a siphon, which I've sterilized. And that's to take it off the sediment so that we're then ready to barrel and bottle. And all we're gonna do, pop the siphon in the top, give a quick suck, and then let it run. It takes a few moments to do that, so whilst you're doing that, it's always handy to have a pint you've prepared earlier. So, uh, only a few minutes now for me to uh, drink the rest of this half a pint. Took a few minutes to transfer the beer from our first bucket and into our second bucket down here. And what it's left behind is all this thick, gooey sediment in the bottom, see? 
really gunky. We don't want that, so it's time to get rid of that. Let's give my finger a quick spin off. Right, so the next thing to do is to add some sugar to our beer, and that's going to help with the secondary fermentation, so that when we bottle and barrel it, it creates some extra carbon dioxide to, in the barrel, create some pressure, so that it pushes the beer out, and in the bottles, so it makes it nice and fizzy. So here I've got two ounces of sugar, and all I'm going to do is pop that in. I'm going to give it a good stir, get it all stirred in, make sure all the sugar is dissolved. The first option is to put our beer into bottles, and here I'm using a Cooper's plastic PET beer bottle with a screw on cap. Uh, these are reusable, so once you've finished with them, just swill them out, keep them somewhere safe for the next beer. To get them into uh, to get the beer into our bottles, I'm going to be using a simple siphon. And on the end of our simple siphon here, we've got a little cap. Pop that off, because that's what we use to help prevent any sediment getting into our beer when we're siphoning. But of course, we've taken off the sediment, so we don't need that. The other part you're going to need on the end is a tap. And I've put my tap on the end here, and that's going to help us to control the flow when we're bottling. So what we're going to do then, Pop our siphon in the top, give a good suck. There comes the beer. And come on down here, James, come and have a look. What we're going to do is we're going to run the beer down the side of the bottle because it's going to want to froth up. And that's going to help prevent us to getting a good fill. So we're going to take it up to about the, my finger mark here, leaving a air gap at the top of the bottle. And that's going to help with the secondary fermentation. And here it comes, slowly down, there we go, perfect. So what we're going to do now, stay. Lovely. All we're going to do now, pop the top off. And this is now going to go in my warm cupboard for the next 48 hours. And then I'm going to transfer it to somewhere cool for the next couple of weeks. And over the next couple of weeks, you're going to gradually see it clear. Um, and then pop open a bottle in a couple of weeks' time. Try it. Enjoy yourself a nice pint of Woodford's Wary. The other option, of course, is to pop it into a pressure barrel. And all we're going to simply do with that is, using our simple siphon again, let us transfer it in. Major thing to do, make sure your tap is turned off before you start siphoning into it. So what we're going to do again, this time I'm just going to pop my tap off. There we go. And I'm just going to let it flow in. Because of course I don't need the tap because we don't need to control what we're doing. Again, it takes a little while to filter down through. So, time to finish off my cider. So we finished siphoning off the Woodford's Wherry from our bucket in into our barrel. And all we now need to do is put our top on. Now inside here is a rubber ring and you need just to coat that liberally with Vaseline. And all we do, pop the top on. That needs to go now back into my warm cupboard for the next 48 hours to start the secondary fermentation off. And that's going to build up some carbon dioxide in the top here, which is going to pressurise our barrel. That stops any nasties and bugs and horrible things getting to our beer, and also helps it in a couple of weeks' time when we go and pour a pint off to push it out of the barrel. So, once we've left it in there for 48 hours, we're then going to transfer it to somewhere cool for about two, three, four weeks. And we're just going to pull off a glass in a couple of weeks' time, have a taste of it, have a look of it, if you like the taste, if you like the look, keep drinking it. If it's not quite ready, leave it another week, come back and have another taster. But hopefully in about a month's time, you'll be enjoying some lovely Woodford's Wearing.